Okay. Hello there, and welcome to the Outstanding Film Podcast, where we talk film, TV, games, and all that jazz that there's no tomorrow. This week, we're talking about both Space Jam films, the 1996 film and the new sequel. My name is Tom, and as always, I'm joined with my co-host, John. Hey, what's up? I'm here. You are here, yes. indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, we got exciting stuff to talk about <laughs> Space Jam 2. We do. Uh, we do. We've literally just been to cinema this morning to see it. And oh boy, is it definitely it a, a film? film. It's a film. I can, I can definitely say that it is a film. Um, yeah. But yeah. before we, we do any of that, let's talk some a little bit of news. We have a director, John. For oh. Blade, for the MCU's Blade. So Bassam Tariq, hope I'm saying that right, has been, oh, uh, has mm, been interesting. recruited, I guess, uh, as the director for Blade. He, uh, You might know him as the director of Mogul Mowgli, uh, which is a film that came out the, this year or last year, I can't really remember, uh, starring Riz Ahmed about a rapper. Um, so obviously well, there's no release date on Blade yet, uh, but we know that Mahershala Ali is going to star as in the main role, and that's about it. What do you think? Uh, that's interesting because, um, well, I haven't seen Blade movies, uh, but no, me neither. Uh, yeah, so I need to watch them uh, because a lot of people are excited about, you know, an MCU Blade uh, film. So yeah, I'm, I need to get into it. Uh, a different yeah, director. Um... That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We, our friend Joe, who we did the Invincible video with, and literally at the time this comes out next week, we'll be doing a Suicide Squad video with him. He loves the MCU Blade, not well the original Blade films. And I think that there's a load of love for them out there. You know, you've got like Blade 3 isn't as well regarded, but Blade 1 and 2 are, you know, really well respected as some of those original comic book films for Marvel, such as, you know, in the same vein as Spider-Man and X-Men that kind of built what we now understand to be the comic book film. And so it's big shoes to fill, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive uh you know you have to keep that what wall you know uh to carry on the legacy or you know the uh the story of uh of blade so carry yeah. on a new legacy yes like like, oh. well, like space jam so it's like uh, so nah. <laughs> uh, next, next piece of news is uh concerning batgirl so the dc film that yeah. has been in development for it seems like forever now but Batgirl herself has just been cast. Leslie Grace, who literally was just in in the Heights, has been cast as as Barbara Gordon, or presumably Barbara Gordon. Uh, could also be Cassandra Cain, um, uh, or not, because they did do her in um, in Birds of Prey. So you know, it's presumably Barbara Gordon. What do you think? Um. Yeah. The um. During the week, there was like uh, for actors, uh, actors, you know, uh, going up for uh, uh, for the role, and I was like, oh, well, which one's going to be? So now we got ba- uh, proper, you know, uh, selection for the for the role, you know. Uh, and this is interesting because you know she's from the musical In the Heights, uh, as I uh, heard, and uh, maybe yeah, this, this is going to be a musical. Oh, that girl. And no, 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 no. that's just it. Just the just the Batman theme song from the yeah. 60s, just with Batgirl in 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 interluded, I guess. Um no, yeah, I think this is very interesting. A lot of people are kind of annoyed about this casting. I think it's cool. I think she did a really good job in In the Heights. Uh, you know, I I mean, people already know that she's not ginger. And as a ginger person myself, I do think that it is, you know, it would have been nice for the role to be cast ginger, but you know, what can you do? Um I guess they'll give her a wig or, or dye her hair or just not have a ginger at all. It's not a necessity for the character, I don't think. Yeah. Obviously, the obvious race change as well. I don't think that these things are that important. I think that it's, you know, yeah, I, I think, think what's it's important cool. is that we get a good, you know, writer, director. It was going to be Joss Whedon directing it. Thankfully, it's not anymore. Oh, it's, oh, was it? I originally, yeah, after, originally. Justice, after Justice League, he was picked up uh, to do... Uh, it might have been part of his contract. He might have agreed to do uh, Justice League just so he could do uh, Batgirl. But yeah, so he was going to do Batgirl for a, quite a long time. But now uh, he's 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 far away from the project. I'm not sure. I don't think Batgirl has a director or a writer at this point. 
yeah oh that's oh yeah needs to find a writer uh, imagine oh my imagine joss whedon directing it that would be a mess <laughs> honestly well i mean even worse it could be good i mean i mean he has done some good stuff in the past and i think especially did, after everything i mean even if he was directing it still after everything that's happened with you know ray fisher and warner brothers and joss whedon i don't think they would keep him i think they would fire him just to you know just so they don't get any backlash for it at the very least um but yeah as we all know warner brothers is a company that is controlled by cgi john don Cheadle. it's true <laughs> It's true. <laughs> uh, wow, yeah. And another Warner uh, Brothers film that is coming out is Dune, or Dune, or D- Dun, or or D- Dune, D- or, or Dune. D- uh, Duen. What Duen? Of course. D- um, Duen. We got a new trailer for Dune. 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 Yeah. Dune. 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 What did you think? Uh, this looks. Uh, <laughs> Um, amazing, you know, with the yeah. uh, special effects, yeah. and it just completely immerses you. Like it's not too, you know, out of place, but it just fits so well uh, in yeah. the film. You know, what I mean, like sometimes, you know, with CGI, you would, like take out uh, the film's uh, reality, but this, this just looks amazing. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. This is obviously Danny Villeneuve, which is, you know. He's done some incredible things. I actually just, I'm going away on holiday tomorrow and I downloaded on Netflix Arrival and Prisoners to watch among many other films. So I'm going to be watching some Denis Villeneuve films. Um, but what I think is really cool about Dune is that, you know, pretty much ever since, you know, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, the it's been, you know, a long time since you've had like a big, you know, fantasy series, uh, you know, in film. And I feel like Dune could fill those shoes. You know, there have been loads of things that have kind of tried and failed to build these kind of universes. You know, if you think of like all like the kind of Maze Runner and Divergent Hunger Games, things that might have started out well and kind of fizzled about a bit. You know, you think about, um, oh, I just had it. It was right there. And now it's gone. You know, there, there have been like, you know, Jupiter Ascending and and uh, Valerian and City of a Thousand Planets. Oh, films that, that have... Oh. Yes, yeah, tried yeah, to build a exactly. universe. And even in the trailers, you could just see the trying too hard. But Dune looks so seamless. Obviously, it's based off a book, which is, you know, already a leg up. But a lot of these properties that I've mentioned were based off books uh, and comics. And what I think looks so cool about Dune is that it doesn't immediately, this trailer isn't saying, hey, look at all this cool stuff. Look at all this wacky stuff. It's just like, you know, it, it presents it in a very natural way, I felt. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I'm glad, you know, it's not taking a, t- a, t- a step too far with the CGI, but, you know, it, yeah, it looks, it's not again, it what you said, seamless. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look like it's all kind of like, you know, shot on green screen, you know, or even like, you know, using something like the volume. It doesn't look like everything, you know, is just being thrown in there. It's a desert, you know, it's not, you know, even the stuff that it aren't deserts look, you know, futuristic, but not too futuristic. I, I definitely think that, it's bringing the it's bringing the same kind of energy as Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. This film is also supposed to be one of two as well. Um, I'm not sure if it will get the sequel though, because as good as his films are, Denis Villeneuve does ne- never gets the sequels. You know. Yeah. His films don't really do that well at the box office, and even though everyone you know praise them i don't think it's likely we'll get the sequel i just think i i you know i'd love there to be but i'm not i think this film's going to end on a cliffhanger and i'm not sure we'll ever see that cliffhanger be fulfilled um, yeah with you know um with dennis villamu he's more of a you know he doesn't do sequels to films um to he, because he wants to keep them you know uh one off mm-hmm. uh yeah, which I really like because you know you're not expanding the universe, but then you're not also not ruining the first film. You know, yeah. just well, definitely. I mean, but- this film he he's even said that this film is you know half of the book, so the other half presumably is going to be in a second film. So you know, I think if this film doesn't make enough money, you know, if it doesn't crack that one billion dollar mark. Or maybe just maybe you know eight eight hundred million or something. I'm not sure it, it's gonna be 
Um, I'm not sure people will green light a sequel. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but you know, uh, his films do have a lot of popularity uh, since uh, Arrival. I think that was the film that you know got him. That, well, to you attention. say that, but I mean, like you know, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I mean, critically, all of his films are really, you know, high praise, but they don't really do well at the box office. And Dune is like a big blockbuster film. Like, you know, it, is. it needs yeah. to do well at the box office. Yeah, I hope it does. Yeah, so. me too. Definitely. Um, and yeah, another thing yeah. that I think is really cool uh, is, is, you know, we've got loads of really, really talented actors in this. You know, obviously, you know, you've got. Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet in the two kind of uh, t- like main roles, and then you've got you know um, Jason Momoa, Rebecca Ferguson, uh, Oscar Isaac, um, Josh Brolin, loads of others. You know this this is chock a block with talent. I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I really hope it will do well at the box office. Same, mm. and 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 one more note: the main character is called Paul. And it, it's so, it throws me off so much that we've got all these characters of like, just like, you know, really like, you know, like interesting, like cool names. And then it's just like the main guy is just Paul. Paul. Yeah. Like I couldn't <laughs> imagine looking at Timothy Chalamet and being like, oh yeah, Paul, that's Paul, man. Hey, hey, what's up? I'm Paul. Uh, okay. Oh, my okay. name's Glob. What the? What? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that that's such a, a weird name, but you know, it's it's um, different. Yeah, I'm, I need to read the book. Um, I so. yeah, I'm gonna literally start reading the book tomorrow, so I'm excited. Um, but it doesn't yeah, have chapters. I, I don't know. It doesn't have chapters. Um. Oh wait, it's what? Weird. Yeah, it's weird. Okay. It's split into like like weird sections that aren't labeled. And I'm a, I'm the kind of guy who when I read a book, Did you, read, you know, okay. I want to finish on a chapter. Did you read so the I blurb? Don't... Uh, no, I have I, I literally know nothing about it other don't than what's in the trailer. Read the blurb because it spoils half the story. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I will not read the blurb. Yes, don't. No, I'm sure I'm sure when I'm finished that I'll talk about it on the pod. Spoiler free, of course. Spoiler free, yes, indeed. So that's it for news. Shall we jump straight into? Space Jam and talk about the first oh, Space Jam boy. film. Yes. One that I know you have a lot of nostalgia for. Yeah. Space Jam, the original. Yes. Oh this is a film God. that I hadn't seen ever until like two weeks ago. So I feel like you're the authority on this. Tell me oh, why really? you love Space Jam. Okay, so... Oh, it's, it's, it's been a while, but I have been watching, you know, clips to remind... My, uh, you know, my childhood uh, watching Space Jam. Uh, so when I was watching Space Jam as a child, I had no idea what was going on, but I enjoyed the film uh, mm. a lot. Uh, I didn't know the cameo or Bill Murray. I thought that that, that actor, I thought he was just a, a junk character. I thought, how did he get there? How, how, how did he? Yeah, that was one thing that I think I, I knew that Bill Murray was going to be in it. And I knew that, more importantly, spoilers, by the way, for both Space Jam films, I knew that Bill Murray was going to be at the end in the basketball scene. So the whole time I was like, when's Bill Murray coming? When's Bill Murray coming? When's Bill? So like, it didn't really come as a surprise to me, which I think is unfortunate. You know, it, it wasn't anything. I was like, yep, there he is. Instead of being like, oh, my God. There he is. Yes. Uh, but really, it is. It's close to my heart because I just enjoy the music as well. And, you know, with the animation, the characters, uh, it, well, I just had no idea what's going on, but um, it, it just really made me happy. Uh, like, uh, but now looking at it, I was like, uh, okay, it's a bit, it's a bit of a mess, but, you know, it still plays uh, 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 um, in a special place in my heart, you know? Um, yeah. And, with the animation, it completely blew my mind when I was uh, when I was watching it for the first time because I was like oh, Bugs Bunny in real life. We need to find Bugs Bunny. Uh, I was like pleading my oh my like, god, my, Bugs my, Bunny's my... real. Yes, like you know, seeing that I was like, oh my god, he's real. So I was like, Mom, can we find Bugs Bunny? And Mom was like, uh, what? <laughs> so, 
So, sure. uh, uh, yeah, the, the, it was. It's different when watching it, you know, older. But back then, I was just having a great time watching it. Uh, I was. I would watch it for ages on a loop, just you know, uh, remember the, the the stuff, and as well as Lily Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Lurley Bunny um, in that film was, you know, different in that, you know. She yeah, was, she, uh, honestly, her inclusion was such a way. I mean, I feel like every time you watch something as a kid, you don't really comprehend what's going on. Some short scenes go on forever. Some, you know, some long scenes go on, like, you know, just pass by. And I feel like, you know, films that I've loved when I was a kid, when I revisited them as an adult, even even films that I, you know, film, whether I liked them or didn't like them, I would just watch them and just be like, well, that scene, I thought that scene was like 10 minutes long, but it's actually about like 30 seconds, you know? Uh, yeah. And um, it, it's the music that's nostalgic as well mm. uh, for me, because there was one song. Did, 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 um, it's time to slam. Um, <laughs> I forgot the song. It, it, it was it's definitely a song. song. It's the theme as well. Um, yeah, I yeah. can't say that any of the music really jumped out to me. Um, but the, the existence of the film, I, I don't know much about the background, but I just I just don't know what it is. What is it? Is it a Looney Tunes like like you know promotion? Is it a a Michael no, B. Jordan well, kind of like my, not Michael B. Jordan, different. Michael Jordan well, kind of like you know, like, Vessel, like, I was so confused. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just trying to remember. With this, well, I know the story a bit. Um, I thought the story was okay, uh, looking back at it now. I mean, you know, it just centers around uh, Michael Jordan's, you know, basketball career and then moving on to baseball, but then going back to ba- uh, basketball. So yeah, the, the, the whole emotional core of the film where he's, you know, he's trying to give up basketball and, you know, he kind of, and he comes back to it for the right reason. He doesn't then stick with it. You know, it's then kind of implied that he goes back to baseball. And so it's like, is the film about, you know, helping out people in need despite your differences? Because, you know, he never displays any kind of prejudice towards any of the tunes. Is the film about reconnecting with the love of basketball? I mean, not really, because he isn't really like, you know, reluctant in a huge way to to do it. I think what is, you know, I feel like the Space Jam films should be treated in the same way that people treat the Fast and Furious films. They're just like pure fun. And, you know, you you can't really approach them with a normal critical mind. And I do approach them with a normal critical mind because unfortunately that's how I've been wired. So I do see them in, in, you know, I don't just look at them you know, in that way. However, really, you know, that, that is what they're about, though. They're just, you know, the bits of fun. Yeah. Um, and with, okay, so uh, I, before watching the well, Space Jam, I watched a bunch of Looney Tune um, TV shows, uh, episodes, and I just love watching it because it's just wacky. Mm. Uh, and it's just so, it's so much fun to watch. And it, Almost, you know, got me uh, into basketball because I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to shoot some." Uh, so I'm going to throw. Well, some we used hoops. to play basketball, didn't we? We used to. Um, yeah, we did. We, we did. We used to go. We used to go down the park with our basketball and just kind of oh. shoot. We, we weren't. We were. T- we were bad. We were terrible, man. We were so bad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we were like, <laughs> oh we were, yeah, we were. We were bad, John. Don't don't try and cover it up. We were the worst. No, no, no. We were like, oh, yeah, we're so good. But now we're just looking back and like, oh. Maybe like we'd hit one in every 20 shots. Definitely yeah. Definitely not pro basketball. Um, but uh, like, like sometime, or was it two, two years ago? Or yeah, it was two years ago. I was playing basketball with my bunch of friends. I was like, wow, well, I'm, I'm actually good because I destroyed the other team. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Is, is this speech jam? God's talking that <laughs> no. Um well yeah, I remember playing it in um, in PE once and being and, and and doing really well and being like, oh my god, I can really play. And then I get and then I went up against people who had A had lots more experience than me, two was better at sport in general, and D were just like uh 
taller than me kid. and so i was just like ah oh, i can't play i was just going up against more runs before good uh yeah and um it, it, you know I, I was watching the film i was like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, basketball because it looks fun and i i think I had Looney tunes merch i think Oh like, really? I, have, I don't really have I, like a huge connection to the Looney Tunes. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, like, I get, I understand the references, you know, baseline. I understand. I know the characters from like seeing them, but I never watched Looney Tunes when I was a kid. I never really had that connection it, with it. It, you it know? was I'm, so much fun. It was so much fun watching. Well, them I mean, because watching these two films, I have seen. You know, like I can appreciate a lot of the comedy, and I, and I see where the appeal comes from. Hmm. And it's just, you know, having that fun to watch. Uh, because It's not a masterpiece, but, you know, it, it's fun to watch. And, you know, it's all about fun, really. You know, the basic of Space Jam. Uh, and the original storyline for Space Jam is, uh, you know, having that story and then you look on to this new legacy. Uh, it's different because the first one is about aliens who are you know, wanting to get more popularity for the theme park, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, they have to uh, do a basketball um, playoff. I don't know. But, you know, just to go head to head. And then you got the high stakes. Uh, you know, uh, everyone getting trapped into the, uh, the server first. <laughs> Yeah, the second one. The that first sounds one so stupid one, when seeing it. It really does. They are so night and day. They're so different. Like what? Like the second one is barely a sequel. Like obviously it's similar in plot and stuff, and they make very you know quick like bl- blink and you'll miss it like references to the first film. But the second one doesn't like really acknowledge the existence of the first film at all. They both kind yeah. of exist in their own separate universes and i i didn't like that because um i wish it didn't go into corporate mode you know doing all those oh. things second the second one really went to corporate mode but i think what the when the first one is at its best when it's just focusing on the Looney tunes and like the difference between them and michael jordan and i feel like it's at it at its worst when it you know it tries to create some really deep meaningful message with michael jordan you know the whole baseball thing and you know or when it's like with his family or the other basketballers when they lose their abilities it feels just like a very cheap you know like oh look we have other basketballers too and they kind of did that in the second one as well um it it, you know it 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 just it it was like it would it could have been like so much stronger if focusing on those like core elements the memorable stuff but everything else was just kind of thrown in there um, and I thought that was a shame because I thought that, you know, the the comedy of the Looney Tunes was really strong. You know, they brought back all the original voice actors to you know play those roles and and and, and the, the animation, you know, it was so authentic yeah. and looked looked really good. And then it kind of got bogged down with like a, a villain who only appears in like three scenes. It's so weird. He kind of appears at the beginning to set up the conflict and then he appears at the end for the basketball game and it's so strange it is it is strange uh but then it it gets it it does get into deep things as well when you know talking about michael jordan you know what he's what he's gonna do uh with this guy you know being at steam park as well um you know, thinking about his career, you know, as well. Um, yeah, a theme park that we <laughs> that we never see again. Like, presumably in Space Jam 2, that theme park still exists and is still, you know, probably, well, I mean, maybe it's probably, uh, it's probably gone out of business by this point, you know, 25 years later. <laughs> yeah, just imagine, imagine that would be cool, you know, seeing that theme park, you know, oh my God, this is the Well, I thought Space that, Jam. I thought that Space Jam 2 would be, you know, the same people back again but no we never see you know we actually see in space jam 2 the aliens for one yeah, we did. for one second for, for one and second does that mean yeah. that in in the universe of space jam, space jam 2 that space jam 1 is a film 
because they're existing inside the Warner Brothers cyberspace. Well, that's 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 a good question. Uh, <laughs> but with the aliens inside that universe, it, you know, it's different because they have no idea, you know, uh, about the the first film except Bugs Bunny because he knows about what you know what happened. And but then the other Looney Tune characters understand like you got Michael Jordan, you know. Um, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, um, it, it, it it's such a strange thing, and I think you know they only really made the the aliens like they made the aliens obviously small, and then the aliens become big uh, and strong because they take the power to the basketballers. But they only <laughs> they only really do that because. They can ha- so they can have the basketballers in. It doesn't really have a purpose. It you know it, it just felt so like you know how do we get in as many basketball cameos as we can? Bring in the fans, you know. Yeah, yeah, that that that's good. You know, just bringing you know basketball fans as well to to watch uh, this. Well. And you know, it's nostalgic to you know have these characters back on screen. But again, it's. A little bit cluttered, you know, with mm. you know all the characters in there. Um, but with Looney Tunes uh, or episodes, they would, you know, focus on one specific character or the other. But you know, the main star is uh, Bugs Bunny. You know, he's yeah. You know, he's yeah. the central character of the whole, you know, Looney Tunes universe. And then Daffy. I wish Daffy Duck had more screen time as well because he was also my favorite character in the Looney Tunes uh, yeah it's so good to see them all interacting with each other it's so much fun but yeah there's it's not like you know you get like small moments with all of them apart from Bugs Bunny who's like the main kind of attraction yeah and with the first one I think it balanced with the characters I think in the first one, I don't I know. Think, yeah. I, I feel I, I still feel like that, that was a problem. Obviously, the, yeah. the comedy was all on point, and I think they do carry the film. I mean, Michael Jordan's acting is pretty horrendous, but they definitely carry the film. There's a really funny moment at the beginning when uh, Michael Jordan's kids are watching the TV, and they're watching Looney Tunes, and it's them on TV like running away from the aliens and screaming like, "This isn't this isn't part of the TV. This is real. This is real." And the kids are just like, "What?" <laughs> And it's just like they're actually just like you know like running for their lives because they think they're gonna die. I thought that was great. Um, yeah. One character who I didn't like and I think is much improved on in the sequel is Lola Bunny. Lola Bunny, yes. Honestly, yes. I, I didn't know anything about her. I'd heard about this redesign in the sequel, and we'll talk about that more when we talk about Space Jam Two. <laughs> but in the original, she just comes in, looks like you know all the characters think she's so sexy. Yeah, all the all the tunes, should I say, think she looks so sexy and are all like, you know, absolutely like um falling in love with her, you know. Yeah, they are like um bewitched by her beauty. And then like she's she's perfect at basketball. You know, she like comes in and she's like, you know, this, like she's basically she's basically Superman in um in Justice League. Justice League, should I say. Uh, and oh. I don't mind that she that she's good at basketball, but she just like comes in, has this like you know flirtatious relationship with uh, Bugs Bunny, and then yeah. that's all she does. You know, she has this super like um, this voice that is really kind of like you know meant to kind of be like all all sexy, and it's just like this is a cartoon bunny. What's this? You know, it's like this design where she has like you know like accentuated features and it's just like this is so pointless and i guess from that perspective when looking at the sequel i think that you know she's more of an actual character in the sequel you know yeah i'm glad for that as well yeah yeah, she's not just like an object that comes and you know saves the day Mm, yeah uh and you know a lot of people were mad about the redesign because you know uh, I'm not one of those uh, people who who were mad about the, the redesign. I was like, oh yeah, she's a proper character. She looks great. But <laughs> with like the people, no, we want her to be thick and you know, you know, really look really cool and, and everything. But no, she she looks a proper character. I I really glad about that. So yeah, yeah, I I definitely agree. 
Um, one of the strangest aspects of the first Space Jam is Wayne Knight. Um, a lot of people know him as the guy from Jurassic Park who's like, see, nobody cares. You know, the, the computer analyst who gets killed in Jurassic Park. And his whole thing is he's like this assistant to Michael Jordan. And then like he spends the whole time like following him around. And then when Michael Jordan gets sucked into Toon World, he starts like digging like a hole, like a really like deep like hole to try and find out where he is. And then like, do you remember this, this guy? No, no, I don't remember. remember I do not remember him. You know what? You know Wayne. Oh, oh, that yes, yes. Yeah, the guy. And then like he, and then he comes into um into the uh, locker. Yeah, he no. yeah, he he like he like comes part of the team and he's like their kind of um I don't know, like their their, their caddy, you know, he's like he's like kind of like their ref their their like motivational speaker, I guess, kind of like you know, spending the whole time just being like, Oh yeah, like you know, you can do it, guys, and I'm part of the team too. And it was it's just so like jarring. I was so just like, what 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 what, what? you just you just constantly made fun of and it was kind of like you know it was kind of it was, it was kind of like so ridiculous that it was like you know it was actually it was actually quite funny i thought um he was just there being wacky the whole time like with barely anything else to him like we don't know like you know really what's his role i have no idea he just comes in and it's just the most stupid kind of guy yeah yeah, um, and apparently not very memorable if you if you don't really remember him. Yeah, um, I only remember the digging scene, and that's it. Just yeah. trying to find Michael Jordan. No, Michael Jordan's gone. Oh Just no! <laughs> I, I think uh, I think that, I think the, the 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 in terms of the humans of the film, the coolest thing is Bill Murray. Oh, yes, so much. Bill fun. Murray, Bill Murray, the guy. Yes, he. Uh, he appeared in the film somehow. He he was there, and that I was like, "Oh wow, it's that's that was him," you know, just yeah. arriving in Tomb World, and he, he was playing basketball with Michael Jordan. I mean, that was Newtons. it. Was so good that they just kind of went for it. Like you know, I'm pretty sure it's yeah. Kathy Duck or something who says, "How is he here?" I guess it's just one of those things. And he's just there, and he and he and he's absolutely terrible at at, um, at basketball. Even the whole time, he's kind of said that he wants to be a basketballer, and 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 he's just it's just a really random and funny cameo that I just think is absolutely bonkers that even that it even exists. It's so out of the blue, and um, I did think that he would be in Space Jam too. I thought that he would, you know come at some sort of climactic moment but he didn't yeah um and yeah I, I mean i can't argue the cameo is great <laughs> um yeah um yeah I, I just want to say that the music was nostalgic the characters you know that you know brings out you know the goofy um the, the goofiness is that a word goofiness? Yeah, yeah i guess it is well with that yeah. in mind before we talk about space jam 2 what what would you give Space Jam out of ten? Obviously, um, your your okay. score will be so much more nostalgic than mine. I, I, I um for enjoyable reasons, I'm gonna give it a seven or an eight. All right, okay. Because no, you could... know it, it's a special place, and you know there's there's some flaws. It's not the perfect film, but you know I it's a great childhood film. Yeah, yeah, no, I could definitely get behind the score of a seven. Uh, yeah, I'd say seven or six. Um, again, it's a film for kids. It's this is a fun film. So you know, I have these criticisms, but at the end of the day, you know, if someone like you, John, would like you know like it as much as you know we do, as as you know as you <laughs> have, then that's all you really want, you know. Yeah, and uh just I had like lots of uh, Looney Tune toys, and you know, uh, I was like, "Oh wow, this this is great!" Um, you know, watching it back then. Uh, yeah. Well, with that in mind, exactly. let's let's move on and let's talk about Space Jam Two and New uh, Legacy. Uh, uh, 
so uh oh i forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> amazing um yeah this is this is one that i was like you know having watched the trailers I think my worst fears of the film came true. I was so worried uh-huh. this would just be like everything Warner Bros. has ever done. Like, remember Matrix? Remember, like, the DC stuff? Remember Game of Thrones? Remember Harry Potter? And frustratingly, so much of this film was just like that, you know? It's so corporate. The film, yeah, it was so yes. corporate. It was like Ready Player One, but turned up to one billion. Um, however, I think that there's a there's a charm to it there really is especially again spoilers there's one scene that i think we both really loved um where they go into various films and the looney tunes are part of those films so they go into um austin powers mad max fury road casablanca is it another uh, one I, I think that might be it uh austin powers yeah um mad max well, we said mad oh max. matrix the Matrix. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, uh, that one. And then we had cameos as well. Uh, uh, we had Rick and Morty. Yes, right, Rick and yes. Morty. There was some uh, DC that- stuff with uh, Wonder Woman and Batman and Superman. And it was, you know, it it was very stupid. But I think in 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 the in the small moments, it was really fun. You know. Yeah, and I. I- to be honest, I really like those fun moments because it really took me back, you know, to the days when I was watching Space Jam 2. At one for the first time. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. John watched Space Jam 2 before anyone else. Oh, my God. I, I, I'm a time trap. Uh, but um, it, it, it was kind of nostalgic for me to, you know, hear those wacky uh, noises, you know, to see those stupid animations you know the things and it's just like haha yeah, yes, and they were the they were very very well integrated like in austin powers obviously going from the spy who shagged me introducing mini me um and having mini me be now i don't know the names but it was a, a looney tune um and i thought that was really uh, cool well that that was the um the hunter i think oh but let me just get looney tunes uh carrots um it, it was the person just gets rabbit season you know yeah you know, like, uh, yeah. yeah it was yeah. you know it was just it, it was it was loads of loads of good fun i i really liked the casablanca one when it was uh the guy playing the piano i oh, thought Elmer. that was yeah like, i That's thought that was name. just oh. like that was gold having watched casablanca earlier this year and having thought it was absolutely incredible you know i mean there's a reason why it's a classic and i think referencing that was great however there were so many times when things were referenced that I was just like, what? Why? What? what? Like, you know, um, I think one that jumps out to me is um, definitely got to be the all the people in the, in the final basketball match. There were oh, just yeah. so many cameos and it was really getting ridiculous. There were the, the, uh, the Scooby gang, the Iron Giant, the uh, King Kong, uh, Yogi Bear, and the Flintstones. Uh, um, yeah. There was, like, all the Batman characters. Oh, Gremlins. Gremlins. Gremlins was there, yeah. Um, the, Back to the Future. Back to the Future was there. You know, the the, the um, Game of Thrones characters, you know, Harry Potter characters. There were even, uh, as people as people pointed out in the, in the trailer, there were even characters from a clockwork orange who are you know like rapists and murderers here like actual like criminals like not even not even in like a comic book sense like in a proper dark sense you know pennywise was there it was so bizarre yeah it was so like in your face you know uh yeah and then you got joker you got the penguin you got the ice king you got (laughs) and they were all (laughs) they were all played by lookalikes oh oh wait what was his name uh mr smith mr smith he was there yeah he was and they were all played by lookalikes and it looked so weird it was just like it was like you know you're walking it's like you're in comic con or something there's loads of people dressed as like you know these characters and it was mad it really was 
uh, yeah, and it's so overwhelming uh, to see what obviously it is. And uh, but the thing that the film was yeah you know, uh, tackling was you know uh, <laughs> Don Cheadle's character. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Don Cheadle throughout the film. I just couldn't stop laughing because. <laughs> He, he's basically a meme. I, I'm I sorry. Mean, we we all know that Don Cheadle is God, but I mean, this was just like just such a fun role from him, just being the algorithm, the Warner Bros. algorithm, or should I say, algae rhythm, um, just doing like <laughs> the most like ridiculous stuff. I think that was it was just a lot, it was a lot of fun to watch him chew the scenery. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, 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 it's so funny to watch for no reason because it's like one of those um, <laughs> just th- that humor that you know generates, you know, just looking at an actor, go, Oh, he's, he's a good actor. But if you know the actor who's done so many things, like he's played as Captain Planet, <laughs> oh my god, the YouTube. Captain Planet yeah. video is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn you into a fucking tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's and... amazing, and 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 especially when compared to the first film, I think that Don Cheadle's character has so much more presence in the narrative. He he has so many scenes, you know. He presents like you know quite the threat, um, and I think that that conflict is presented really well, especially when you know in the first film the villain as i said was in the beginning and then he didn't show up until the very end but john don cheetah was you know he was present from the very start making and, this you know, it got me really engaged especially his meme but you know <laughs> with everything throughout the film uh you know we know the tensions of the character we're knowing where the story is and we know who the villain is you know uh, from Space Jam, we go. Oh, there he is. He's at the. He's at the uh, end. There, oh, he's just there. But you know, with Don Cheadle's character, you know, he's there, uh, and it's it's great to watch. But, yeah, he was making yeah. like one of the funniest things was the whole. Now, this is something that I never would have expected. Warner Brothers were making fun of themselves so much. They were. In the they board were. meeting at the beginning, you had them, you know, being like, oh, it's all the algorithm. Look, it's LeBron James and Harry Potter. It's LeBron James in DC. It's him, like, in all of these, like, re- you know, like, existing, you know, it's like LeBron of Thrones. It's It was just hilariously over the top. And, and they had the they had these two, um, these two uh, board members who were just so over the top and so, like, stupid. And one of us was so you know, willing to make fun of themselves. I don't think I would see that from Disney. You know, I wouldn't, I I wouldn't see that from any of the, like, I mean, let's be honest. What other big studios are there at this point? It's basically just Warner Brothers, Universal and Disney. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that from a big Hollywood studio. And I applaud that. I applaud that they're willing to be like, yeah, we're stupid. You know, they literally called the tunes, the bottom of the barrel, you know, they call them the rejects. And, like, you know, that is exactly what they've been doing. Like, they, I watched a video this uh, after we watched the film, and they literally t- mentioned how Warner Brothers has been rejecting the Looney Tunes, and they just, they didn't, they embraced it, you know? They used yeah. their own misgivings as a company to their advantage, I think. Yeah, and, you know, nowadays we don't see a lot of Looney Tunes um, stuff, and that breaks my heart because, you know, I watch Looney Tunes was just the best thing back in the day. And there was this show, I think, or channel, where they would show Wonder Brothers, like, Looney Tunes or all the other characters, and they would give the spotlight. And I think it was called Boomerang, I think. But they would show, like, Wonder Brothers stuff. But that I think that's gone now um, because they don't do cartoons anymore, I think. Oh, that sucks. Uh, yeah so but yeah kids kids yeah, these yeah. days missing the classics <sighs> I, I wish there was like a, a blue a box set of like loon tunes I hey, there maybe, maybe there is 
to you never know i mean i mean that you know as as we said they're extremely iconic i wouldn't be surprised um but i think that this film towards the end i didn't i, I think in the beginning, in the first half of the film, I thought the Looney Tunes were, were used really well. As I said, integrated into popular, you know, films and TV. Um, they had some good jokes. The whole idea that, you know, they have to get all the Looney Tunes back is a, is a fun little, you know, it makes it different from um, the first Space Jam and, and, you know, has that cool, you know, fresh freshness about it. However, in the second half, I think the Looney Tunes lost a lot of their appeal you know, they were turned to CGI renders of themselves. And the CGI Looney Tunes looked horrendous, I thought, especially when compared to the um, the cartoon versions. There's a scene just before the final um, basketball game where they are training and, and, and the Looney Tunes go absolutely crazy and they make all of these, like, you know, incredible like contraptions there's explosions there's like antics to get the ball and then when they release their energy again at the end it just wasn't nearly as kinetic or fun or you know didn't have that Looney Tunes energy which I think was a shame you know I think Looney Tunes are really cool in the first half and really had that comedy and spirit but then after that they became you know TGI and it wasn't nearly as as fun and and they did this really really odd thing with the Bugs Bunny sacrifice yeah that that really bugged me i was like what what <laughs> it really that? bugged yeah. you <laughs> comedy join everyone uh yes uh but that one i was like oh right okay um but then usually if it's a children's film they would bring back the character you know like raya the last dragon um, yes that is a perfect example Spoilers for Ryan and Last Dragon, but they do the same thing. And and I think that it, it, it would have more emotional weight if Bugs Bunny had stayed dead. However, obviously you're not going to kill Bugs Bunny, so don't do it at all. You know, have the risk, have LeBron James do it, because as he said, he's the, the, whole, the whole idea is if he does a specific move, it'll glitch out the game and it will, it will stop Algae Rhythm, Don Cheadle. However, you know... It could kill the person in the process. But as LeBron James said, he isn't a game character. He's a, he's a human, so he'll be fine. Just have that be the tension of the scene. And then, and then you know, have it all be okay. The, the whole fake yeah. out death just felt so strange. Uh, and it, it's just so bizarre, really, to have that. Like, I'll do it. I'll do the, the thing that, that, that crushes the game. You know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it it doesn't even come from a place of character. There was no kind of arc that he'd gone on. Um, it's like it's not the same. I think it's done better in Deadpool two, but it's like in Deadpool two, right? Spoilers, Deadpool two. But at the end of Deadpool two, they did this fake out sacrifice where Deadpool almost dies, and then he's fine. It it just. When they do that, it just frustrates me because it's like you, you're reducing the stakes, you know? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it didn't work well, I think, that that idea of, you know, sacrificing themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree, especially in the way that they resolved it because he just shows up at the end. He's like, hey, I'm back. Uh, and LeBron James is like, oh, you. And it's like, maybe they could have just hinted the fact that he was back, you know? Not instead of, like, just explicitly being like, oh, he's back. None of it mattered. Okay, bye. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up, Doc? I'm back now. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, incredible impression, by the way. Top tier. Absolutely top tier. Uh, one of the things that I... Obviously, this film, it isn't following... Michael Jordan, but this time it's following um, LeBron James. And I liked how the story was very different. LeBron James wasn't trying to give up basketball. He was trying to teach his kids, especially his one kid, kid Dom. And he's trying to be like, look, you know, you know, basketball is important. You've got to respect the game and not and, you know, stay focused. He's trying to impart the same lessons that were imparted on him when he was a kid. And they really try to have this emotional like core to the film but i think the pro 
the problem comes in the fact that, like, why would the kid trust Don Cheadle, you know? Like, LeBron James is shown to be a decent dad. You know, he comes into the kid's room and he's like, he sees what he's been pl- been playing. He shows some, you know, willingness to connect with his kid from the beginning. But then the kid is so easy to then ditch him and say that he's the worst dad and, you know, doesn't understand him. Whereas he's, you know, he's been showing that he's been trying to. And it just felt like the whole conflict of the film and this whole, like, message they were trying to impart just was built on such flimsy foundations. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um... I'm sorry, I, I just had to process what you just said because that whole chunk, sometimes my brain doesn't work in. I was like, sometimes they dream. I'm so sorry about that. And, and, that's and all right, that's all right. I could um, listen. That's all right. There's just so much that, I, that, you know, that I could talk about, you know. Um, I did I did think that, um, the again, they didn't force the basketball players, like other basketball players apart oh, from LeBron. Yeah. Yeah, they were yeah, present, it. but they weren't, like, huge. But then, like, there was this weird thing where they were all, like, turned into, like, human-animal hybrids. Yes. But one isn't Kronos. Yes. Kronos was very... Uh... I wish he was the main villain, to be honest. Yeah. The idea of, like, a super, you know intelligent and um just just in general superior basketballer who can slow down time and you know comprehend things faster than any human is a really cool idea and it would be a really nice way to challenge lebron uh instead of just having this video game thing uh the video game thing comes with a lot of uh very awkward and cringy like jokes you know when lebron dabs that was um that was painful it was very Uh, painful yeah uh and with with the jokes as well uh, like uh like one scene you know when they are introducing uh, the algorithm or the algae algorithm uh, the, the 3000 or something yes and then uh lebron's like no nah, i don't like it and then one of the characters they said oh yeah let's cancel the algorithm i was like Can- yeah exactly what? it's like oh cancelled uh, and it's like guys this is this isn't you know like i mean to my knowledge obviously i wasn't alive in the 90s so i don't know about space jam one but space jam one didn't it just felt like the comedy came from timeless areas you know the 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 Looney Tunes were funny and they you know will probably always be funny you know Bill Murray was funny not because he was referencing popular things and it immediately dates the film you think about something like Black Panther where they make that horrendous what are those jokes it's so cringy and it dates the film immediately you know whereas something like Guardians of the Galaxy, where it has jokes based on, you know, just like logic and, you know, wit, it isn't dated as well, as much. Whereas I think Space Jam 2 is immediately dated in some of the jokes that it makes, you know, like dabbing. You know, that's a joke that might have been like a lot funnier back in 2017. But it, now it's it's just like this is this is just painful to sit through and watch, you know. And again, the, the, the funniest parts were the Looney Tunes. So stick with that. That's what works, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Another another joke that I thought was the worst was the rap. Oh God, yes, the rap. Oh God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, who? All right, help me out here. What's, it remind what, me of that rap. What's the name of the pig who does it? Let me let me get the pig. Is it Porky Pig? Yeah, it's Porky Pig. Well done, Tom. You got Thank the medal. You. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, yeah, Porky yeah. Pig does this rap, and it's just the worst. How does, like, I'm sorry, but they decide, how is it, what's a creative, I imagine the writers are sitting in the room, like, okay, so we need to, we need to get the, the tune squad uh, above the, uh, what are they called? The goon squad. 
Um, we've got to get them above them in in terms of um, you know points. How are we gonna do that? How are the Toon Squad gonna get the upper hand? Oh, I know. Why don't they do a rap battle? Oh yeah, brilliant. The kids love that, and it's like, oh, it was so horrible. Honestly, I think I died. It was, it was, it was disgusting. It it, it really was like this. Um, just such pandering yeah. again, trying, trying so desperately to be funny and and you know with it, and it's like it's not. It's not those things. It's it's embarrassing. I thought. Yeah, and with. <sighs> I wish they didn't have those embarrassing moments because in Space Jam, they didn't have that at all because no, it was just really didn't. And, you know, it, it, it just felt, you know, like a film. But this, it's trying to engage, you know, some, I don't know, just cringe. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. I agree. And as you said before, this film with the Looney Tunes, it was so stuffed. There were so many oh. of them. Like, you know, there were some really funny moments. Like, one of them was like, shoot the shoot the ball. And he just, like, gets out his guns and just starts shooting the ball, like, literally. And I thought that was, like, you know, funny. And there was some, like, really, really good, like, bits of comedy. But, again, it was so masked. And, and so many of the characters. You know the old, the old lady? What's she called? Uh, oh, uh. I was about to say Granny Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Granny Goodness is killed. It's Granny. It's yeah. Granny. Yeah. So granny. granny, her whole role is she does things. Again, this is another thing that I heard in this video that I watched, and and it's a really good point. Her whole thing is that she does things that old ladies generally don't do. Like she, like her, like all of her jokes just derive from her like doing like ninja moves and stuff. When it's like, oh, oh, no old lady should be able to do that. And it's just, it's it's very low-hanging fruits, it felt like. Um, you know, uh, when she, I did, I, it was quite funny, actually. You know, when she takes out Kronos? Yes. And then, and then LeBron says, she is the one. And it's just the, the weirdest Matrix reference I've ever heard. It was great. I loved it. Um that was yeah that was that was great fun but let's let's talk about let's talk about lola bunny in particular obviously as we said she's got so much more character this time around yeah and i feel like that we understand the character a lot more and you know what she's trying to do but at, we got we saw her doing the amazon um test yes i think yes yeah, and so like you know, you you understand that she's you know tra- you know that she's that she's trained and she doesn't just come and be perfect. She's you know she's trained for it and 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 obviously you know with with our redesign as well, she isn't so much of an object. She's she is more of a character who you know just another member of the squad. Um, I I have no idea why she's played by Z- Zendaya. I have literally no clue what that adds to the film. You know, like what yeah. is like why why Zendaya? I mean. Like, yeah, she's a great actress, but does that, like, did it have to be her? I just felt that was, like, just a little bit weird. But you know what was weirder? <laughs> How all of the, all of the, um, like, okay, so in, in this Amazon test, um, Lola Bunny, like, helps out. She's like, no, I'm not going to help you guys to LeBron and Bugs Bunny. And then, like, they mention family. And it's like, it's like, it's like Fast and Furious. She just stops and she's like, family? And she saves them. And there are so many times in the film when they mention family and people are like, we'll do it for family. And it's like, what is this? Is this like a meta kind of thing about Fast and Furious? Like, and the kid's name is Dom. Like, is that just a coincidence? Or is that like me looking into it too much? Yeah. And like, I think the Fast and Furious films uh, are influencing or impacting the yeah. films into that <laughs> family well as 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 you know as it has been recently there's been such a surge of fast and furious memes and it feels like that's bleeded over but this film was like shot like two three years ago at this point like what the hell is like you know like how how is fast and furious having this much of an impact as, presumably maybe it's a coincidence yeah uh I, I just don't know. Yeah. It's like it's 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 like a curse. Like whenever someone 
mentions family, everyone <laughs> just go crazy. Fast and Furious. <laughs> um, I tell you what, every episode of Superman and Lois starts with the recap, and they love playing this clip where Lois says, "Let's just focus what we came here for." Family, and every time I just imagine Superman and Dominic Toretto just working together, I just it'd be just amazing. And um, but yeah, you're right, it really has bleeded into everything in that way. Um, I think my final point that I'm going to give about Space Jam was I thought the CGI was great, um, it was really seamless, yeah, and especially, great. especially in the final, apart from the, the, the tunes in their CGI forms, which I thought looked horrendous. I thought that the, the um, CGI and, and the action was done really, really well. It was really fast and energetic and and it was engaging. I mean, the film was just under two hours long. It didn't feel like two hours. It felt like an hour and a half, maybe an hour long. You know, it, it was really well paced. I thought, I, thought. It, uh, I thought I was in a long Oh, really? Time, yeah. I don't know why. Wow, I didn't feel that. I, I Honestly, it went fast for me. Mm. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm glad that I'm, I'm glad that, I mean, honestly, for me, if it had gone on for like two hours, if it felt like it had gone on two hours, I might have died. Because, um, it, it, you know, it, it was very difficult to go on at some point. But yeah, so what, what would you give Space Jam a new legacy out of 10? Oh, uh, wait, is there more stuff I want to talk about? Uh, uh, well, I'm, I think that's all for me. Is there anything else you want to um, say? I mean, the film was a little bit nostalgic, but the thing that really got me was like, the idea of the server first was a bit, eh, because it, it's trying to, you know, I mean, it does have that original concept, you know, this this industry having this whole other, you know, Game of Thrones, uh, yeah. all the other films as well. And it was a bit jarring for me because I thought it was going to, you know, all be focused on Looney Tunes and, you know, what they're doing. But then it's the company that's making fun of themselves. But yeah, also it was just one of those shoving down all of this, all of their IPs down your throat. Yeah, and I thought, wait, but no, I thought we're gonna focus on the lunations. No, we're gonna focus on the bigger, that bigger stuff as well. So, yeah, yeah. If if they make a third one in twenty five years time with the next hit basketball superstar. Um, I I really think that they should uh, focus it on the Looney Tunes and you know the the core of the franchise, as it were. Um, one thing that I actually thought was 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 almost well done was LeBron had this whole arc where he was um, he's so strict about basketball. He's like, no, these are the rules. You got to stick to the rules. You can't make a game where it's like you know it's it, it, it's doing like power ups and style points and you know you can't play basketball like the looney tunes do but i enjoyed how they how you know they had this little arc where he learns to let go a little bit and then in the final half of the game you know it's a lot more you know the looney tunes get to go crazy even though it's not quite as, as crazy as i would hope for um but yeah i think that was quite nice yeah uh but although I did have some fun watching the film, uh, I was like, yeah, this is great. The animation's cool. A bit weird on the... Uh, uh, with the Looney Tunes. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. So I would give Looney Tunes... Oh, wait, sorry. Space Jam, <laughs> a new legacy. Um, I, I've been thinking about it. I'm going to give it six out six out of ten okay right decent um i definitely think you had more fun with it than i did um and i think again one of those things is that i'm so in my critical mindset that you know i had trouble letting go and just kind of having fun with it um i think i did have fun and i think if i were to rate it on just how much you know how fun it is i think i would give it a six out of ten but i think i'm gonna go for four out of ten five out of ten Six out of ten on a good day, I'd say. But I think today I'd go for a, a four out of ten. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, I think it is. I think it's a worthy sequel to to Space Jam. I really do. I think you know, yeah. it, it's it's exactly what Space Jam. What you know, kind of what you know, what a sequel I would expect it to be. And I think it improves on the original in a lot of ways. You know, it 
considering they're both so similar, it does things so much better. And hey, if they do make a, th- uh, a, a third film when it comes to 2046, maybe it will in- it will perfect the formula and make a film that, you know, completes the trilogy in a satisfying way. Um, oh, I imagine there was a post credit scene. Maybe there was. I mean, we didn't we didn't stick around, but maybe there is a post credit scene where uh, it's just like I'm, I'm, where it's I'm like gonna search it now. Don Don Cheadle uh, meets the guy, the villain from the first one, and they're both <laughs> like, "Oh, let's let's band together and and we together we can destroy the Looney Tunes once and for all." And then it's like you know Thanos will uh, return in Space Jam. Infinity Space War. Um, uh, two post credit scene. Does the did 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 the oh come on? What? I kind of the... hope it doesn't. Okay, have a post-credit okay, it doesn't scene. have it. Does it, it okay. doesn't have post credit scene. That's good because generally, like post credit scenes used to be so special. They used to be at the end of some some superhero films. It was like you know it was a Marvel thing, and then kind of DC started doing it, and then you know X Men. I guess X Men started doing it um, around the same time as Marvel. But I feel like the more they've done it, the more kind of the less special it's become. And loads of films are doing it these days. So mm. you know, I just kind of hope that they. I hope that yeah. they kind of that lo- the, the films kind of know when to use it and know not when to. So I'm 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 happy I'm 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 happy that Space Jam didn't have one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was a little bit disappointed, but I had fun. I had fun. Yeah, but... me too, definitely. I mean, this year so far in terms of films, I think blockbusters this year haven't been great, but I think there have been some really good, you know, smaller films. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Shall we uh, move on to the viewing? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right, so I'll uh, let you go first. What have you uh, been watching this week? Uh, so I am... Okay, so I've started watching a TV show called The Walking Dead. Really? Yeah. Wow, so yeah, this is all, it's all on Disney Plus now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nice, so... Heard a lot about Walking Dead. Obviously, graphic novel series is on like season twelve now. What do you? What did you think? Um. So I'm on the second season right now. Oh damn! Why are you going through it fast? Uh. Well, the first uh f- first season only had six episodes. Oh right. Okay. Decent. Not too bad. Yeah. So this one. Do uh, they all have six? The season, do they all have six episodes? Uh. They don't. Uh, they don't all have six episodes. The first season does. Oh, so cool. now they got. 13 episodes per season, I think. Okay. Or 16. Not terrible. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I thought, okay, how about I just watch The Walking Dead so then I can get into the comics? Because uh, you can get the comp- Compendium. Compendium. Uh, yeah, Walking Dead, Compendium. And that is, the first uh, Compendium is only 50 quid. That's pretty good. And, and it's, it's over 1,000 pages. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's, I love a compendium, the- honestly. I mean, I've, I've spoken about Saga on the pod before, but compendiums are a perfect, you know, way to condense a long, yeah. you know, comic comic series. Yeah, and uh, with this one, so the TV show, it's it's a different TV show. So, right. uh, I've been watching it, and it it. It's a different experience. Well, I'm just trying to explain it how how we talk about The Walking Dead. So it's expository. It's all over the place. It's the dialogue is off and on, but sometimes because you know you can understand the characters, but sometimes it, the line don't deliver that well within the characters, uh, and it feels sometimes the episodes feel empty with like. The, the plot where's it going and i feel like okay h- how about you add something like this but they just don't but sometimes they go for something but there's a lot of things that do uh explore about like religion about like the world going to crap you know with everything you know the zombies or the walkers you know uh taking over um cities you know destroying people's lives it goes to a lot of themes like political or religion or you know 
what they're fighting for and it's quite deep as well uh, uh it, you know it talks about life as well and there's a lot of plot twists uh within uh, the show uh and i feel like that they should explore more but then i'm just hoping that they, do, they don't have this repetition because uh they're just going from one point to one uh, to point a to point b and i feel like okay let do, do something else within a zombie apocalypse you know you could try to do something else and i have heard that after the third season it goes bad like it, it doesn't go too well so then i'll okay i'll just watch three seasons and see how it goes yeah I've, uh, I've heard that after kind of season five it just kind of starts going around in circles oh yeah and i wish you know they could go through that but uh, season one, season two are actually quite good to watch uh, because it, you know, it's, it sparks, you know, the start of The Walking Dead. And I really like the characters uh, as well, uh, uh, especially one character called Daryl, uh, who's played by Norman Reedus. Yeah. Uh, so Norman Reedus, uh, I, I, he's a great guy, uh, Norman Reedus. He was in a video game called Death Stranding, and I've been... I love that he's game. A, he's, and, he's actually an original character for the TV show. He's not in the comics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's in that as well. Uh, and But sometimes with the characters, they're, they're a bit shallow. They don't mm. really, you know, explore more. I feel like they're just side characters. And I wish, oh, how about we explore more of that character? But we just don't sometimes. Like, yeah, that sucks. Uh, I, I wish they did that. But it is, it is enjoyable to watch uh with a few episodes but there's like a lot of shock, shocking moments as well but i feel like it's a little bit predictable with with the show like oh oh no this is gonna happen you know you're just gonna have this this one character or they're gonna kill off this character uh and i feel like they don't need to do that as well but the characters i'm seeing they're going strong they, they're doing this and it it's going uh, you know, against the you know the beliefs you know about the zombie apocalypse, well that what they're going to fight for, and it's quite deep as well. Uh, and uh, I feel like the first two seasons are just uh, good to watch, but sometimes it is a little bit repetitive, but it doesn't get too much in the way as much. Uh, but the dialogue's a bit on and off. There's sometimes confusing characters as well that don't really like i'm in the second season but the first season was great like it sets up the world and i love it and it, it's great but the second season there was one confusing character that really wait what what what, what are you trying to do so yeah it, their, their intentions as well so uh and i like this uh the sound uh, as well in, in the one can dare like the, the music as well you know it's intense you know it's dark grim uh and it, it really steps up for that as well brilliant um so um, with, that, with that in mind i'm curious do you think that um do you think that the sh- yeah, do you think that it's uh are, are you are you sold on getting the comic now do you think you're definitely it's worth well, getting the comic? a little bit because okay. with what could do i feel like i want to explore more but a lot of people said that the, well, the, the the graphic novels or the stories in, in that, they said this is way, that's so much better than the TV show because it holds justice for these characters. They explore more the get about the characters. And I feel like comic books can do that really well within, you know, exploring more characters. Uh, yeah, and, and the comic, I, I, I think the comic knew where to end as well because the comic ended after you know, a, a few years, whereas The Walking Dead is still going. I think it's in its final season now. Um, after, and, and, and a lot of yes, people it agree is, it that is at it, their it should final, have ended a long time ago. It is ago. in their final uh, season, I think. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, right. So I, I'm i going to see what's going to happen. And I'm a bit worried about, like, if I'm going to go in that private hole watching the seasons because I just yeah. don't want to, you know, be that 
like oh my god yeah walking dead but yeah i, I know i know exactly what you mean i i i have watched so many sitcoms sitcoms already have the, the issue where they just become so repetitive and boring and the most recent one i watched scrubs i only watched season one because i knew that you know like if i watched it all that i'd just be watching some real you know boring stuff yeah uh, so with that in mind what would you give walking dead out of out of 10 um it is enjoyable but i wish there was it the zombie pox i wish there was like a lot of things to explore within the first two seasons because i feel like that it's a slow start but it is good to watch uh and there's some really good characters i really like that you know holds well in this in this world uh so i would give this an a seven out of ten or an eight okay. good yeah nice yeah what about you what you've been watching well i watched one of just such a classic film uh this weekend i watched school of rock just like honestly having having watched this so many times when i was a kid haven't watched it you know in 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 ages and it really really holds up man it's only an hour and a half long and i think it's perfectly paced and structured to build so many memorable characters like it's it's mad that apart from like you know maybe the four main act like you know adult actors it's all kids and each of them you know, uh, craft such memorable characters, whether you're thinking about the actual members of the band itself or, or you know, like the, the, the side characters who are, they're all so memorable in so different ways. And I think it's such a testament to incredible writing that they all, you know, that they all come together in, in a very tight, you know, um, in a tight way. It's never boring. The plot is so well um, paced. Nothing every line you know feels like you know it's so purposeful and so consistent you know you think about characters like ned who i think is a brilliant character because every line that he says every line that his girlfriend says to him you know is building this character arc for him of the kind of person that he is um you know what he wants and and, you know and where, where things have gone um and obviously the songs are all bops like the the fact that you know like you've got some incredible songs and it's not it's not a musical or anything it's just uh, you know and it all fits into the narrative so well but obviously the the standout is jack black this film you know went so you know a long way in in kind of defining what his career would be and he's so good he has such enthusiasm for what he's doing and he's got great chemistry with a lot of the kids you know it's a it's a bit that he has done in a lot of films and yet he still has loads of range in it you know and and you feel, you know, his passion for it, as well as, you know, in, in especially the parents evening scene that he, you know, he is, he got layers to him. And I think, I, I just think it's such a perfect film, you know, and, and it is, it has withstanded the test of time uh, for me at least. And, you know, you know, I might mark it, you know, I might mark it down on some, on some, uh, you know, child acting that doesn't really hold up and, you know, especially the adult, like the parents, the parents are pretty shocking when you look at like the quality of some of the child actors, the the parents are like, you know, the characters are so stunned, uh, you know, like stunted um, and barely have anything to them. Um, but yeah, it's just such a, such a good film about, you know, like potential and heart and soul, uh, you know, told through music. And I haven't seen the play, the musical on stage. Have you seen the musical? I feel like you probably have. Um, on stage, what? Yeah, School uh, of Rock. No, I haven't. No, right. Okay, I feel I felt like you had, but yeah, apparently it's just as good. You know, like the music's all great, and, and you know, I, I, yeah, like, I did hear reviews about it. Um, yeah, I, I've I've heard it's quite good. I um, saw it um when i was walking in new york and it was there yeah and a lot of people were like oh my god this is just so good i was like okay okay so yeah i i really don't know how it could live up to the film but i've heard it's good you know and honestly like i i think that i think this film's so good that i, I would like to quite give it a go but yeah i think I give it a nine out of ten and it is such oh, a classic yeah mm. such a classic Love such that. a such it, a... It's... <laughs> where have you just, where have you been just... yeah i feel like you've just been so far away yeah go on uh, no, I just wanted you to, you know, yeah, um, 
say what you want. But School of Rock, that's such a classic film to watch. It really like, is. Um, it, it's so fun to watch with your family um, because we are huge School of Rock fans yes. uh, for the film. And we um, we just love it because we're just a huge music family. And uh, we watched it with my cousins. We watched it with my uncles. We watched, you know, with all of that. And it's just so much fun to watch. Um, even though you're a music fan, but it's great to, you know, watch Jack Black being a great actor. In this yeah, episode. it's it's peak Jack Black. I, I think that he... He has a lot more range than, you know, especially this film might suggest. You know, if you look at things like Jumanji, um, you know, Kung Fu Panda, he has differences to his kinds of comedy. Unlike, you know, other actors, uh, comedians who I think so many of their films are, uh, you know, similar performances. I think Jim Carrey is an example. I really love him and I think he's done some great stuff. But so many of his films are just doing the same carbon copy. And I think Jack Black has also done that. But I think, you know, in the, in his early stuff, and this is the same for Jim Carrey, the early stuff is just timeless because it's so effective. And, 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 and you know, that is a reason why why their, their bits work as well as they do. And it really works in School of Rock. Yeah. Um, so, it's great. it is. So, what else have you watched this week? Um, I've read a graphic novel called Batman the Three Jokers. Ah, yes. Uh, I talked about little with this today with you, but um, yeah, yeah so um, so this one was a very uh, this one's a, a different story because I thought, okay, it's gonna explore more about the joke, it's gonna explore about you know. Uh, why do we have these um, Joker different timeline up to it? Well, if you read Batman Endgame, there's one sequence uh, in the comic where um, Gordon is looking through the old pictures of Joker and you can see Joker like in the old pictures throughout history and it's creepy. It's so yeah, creepy. Batman, Batman Endgame is by no means a horror comic, but it's one of the most effectively scary sequences in any Batman comic that I've ever read. And it's it is a very scary comic. Uh, this, well. the, 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 the Three Jokers is written by Jeff Johns, isn't it? Yeah, Jeff Johns. I don't. I, like, I, I, honestly, I don't know why it wasn't Scott Snyder. I feel like you know it should have been. It him. should have been Scott Snyder, man. It should have been because he would have like. He understands more about the Joker clearly about you know with Batman and you know to understand more you know the you know the this the brutality of Joker you know in the new Vity Two one because he's a, he's a lot more uh, fierce first of all you know you know I mean yeah. you know he, he fights Batman you know one to one in Endgame <laughs> you know that's crazy. Um, but this uh, this one is more centered about the mystery of the three jokers. Why are the three jokers? Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, uh, but uh, it is it is cleverly written, uh, and I'm not a huge fan of Jeff Johns, but uh, I I don't I don't like him, but I do like his work, uh, like Doomsday Clock. Or uh, the Green uh, Green Lantern. I do have one of the Green Lantern. Yes, books. the 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 you have Rise of the Third Army, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, that that's that's from the start of the re- of the New Fifty Two run, and that is one of the ones that really got me into comics, just in general. There were three pillars for me. It was Civil War, which is still probably my favorite comic of all time. Craven's Last Hunt and the first three volumes of New Fifty Two Green Lantern all shaped what I think you know make incredible comic book stories. Yeah, um, but the one that really shaped me was Scott Snyder's comic, uh, the uh, New Fifty Two. I thought yeah. that really got me into the world. Yeah, he it's, uh, it's one of the best Batman runs I've ever read. Yeah, I agree. Um, so this one, uh, I thought it was cleverly written, uh, you know, to explore more about what the 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 mystery, and you know, it goes through, you know, uh, it goes through each of the Jokers, you know, passed with the Bat family. So you got um, Joker who shot Barbara Gordon, uh, the Joker who killed, no, who killed uh, Jason Todd, and you got the one who was fighting 
Batman in Endgame who tried to kill him. So, um, so these are the uh, core Jokers, and they explore more about it. And there's a lot, lot of twists within this this one. It's, it is a short graphic novel, but it, it it's it's a simple story, but it, it it's really deep as well. There's like some messed up bits uh, within uh, the relationship between Joker and J- Jason Todd, and it goes to like the other ideas of like, is this the right Joker or is this the wrong Joker? Uh, and it we do get some little answers about Joker, but it it it. it doesn't really ruin the mystery of the Joker, but uh, the ending of it is quite impactful, and it 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 really impacts the ending of Killing Joke. And I was like, "Wow, that's that that's a uh, that's something." But also, there's it 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 does it it does also explore the relationship between Batman and Joker. You know, uh, they've been fighting for years, and there's one great opening to yeah there's a great opening to the graphic novel where you can see batman's scars uh like you can see the scars who you know which villain did the scars so you got one by penguin you got one by killer quark you got one by scarecrow but mostly uh well the most of the scars are by jokers especially the one in in game you can see that one as well uh and it's all around his body oh you can see the Bane um, scar as well, you know, we break uh, back. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I love that kind of stuff. In Arrow, um, which I think is, a, is you know, one of the best superhero uh, TV shows, in in the first five seasons, it tells the backstory of Oliver Queen on, on the island he gets stranded in. And, and you see, you know, in each season, you see like where he gets certain scars and certain tattoos. I, I, I think that kind of stuff is is, is really cool. Yeah, uh, uh, and I thought that's that's a really good detail. Um, yeah, uh, and I thought it was you know cleverly adjusted about you know about the Joker and uh, about the past you know what what they're doing, but it's really focuses about Batman you know fighting Joker, and there's one great twist at the end of it you know. Um, Batman talking about Joker. So, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, what would you give it out of 10? I thought it was a great read. Uh, I would give it 9 out of 10 because it was Brilliant. cleverly written and the art as well is great. Uh, and it is, it is a short one. I wish it was a bit longer because it felt like one of those classic stories. You know, like you got Death in the Family, you got The Killing Joke. It feels a lot like that. You know, those solo stories, it feels really good it's not too complicated um but yeah um awesome yeah yeah brilliant right so one last thing i want to talk about before we uh head on out is something that is you know a disappointing thing to say the least so this week i finished the flash season seven so the end of season seven ad and Oh, this season broke me, man. I have been keeping up the Arrowverse for so long, oh. and I still love most of it. And The Flash is one of the best shows in the Arrowverse. Season one is incredible. Season two is amazing. Season three isn't is 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 good. It's good. It's not amazing, but it's good. Season four is bad. Season five is bad. Season six is great. Season six was such a return return to form. And I have to say, and I'm really upset that I have to say this, but season seven might be the worst season out of all of them. My God, it's so. First of all, it starts out finishing the season six storyline. Obviously, season six was cut was cut short because of COVID. That's fine, you know. And I think that's the strongest stuff. The bit from season six is the strongest stuff. And then after that, it goes through this absolutely ridiculous storyline, which is you know, which is so has this weird leaning on family and it's like this weird Fast and Furious universe, which is so strange with weak villains and <laughs> you know, and and it takes the cheesiness 
too far in my opinion and i love a, i love a bit of cheese i think you know cheesiness can often be mis- mixed up with the s- sincerity and i think the flash is so much sincerity and cheesiness uh, with it but this just felt like it was too much there was no sincerity there it, and the characters felt like they weren't built you know you know they weren't developed enough and then the back half of the season they did uh, last week i talked about godspeed they did that they did uh, godspeed um wait they didn't they did, they did, but they've been oh, building. They Sorry, they've I, been building Godspeed since the end of season five. This is three years of build up, and they just decimated it. It was terrible. Not only that, but it was the Flash's one hundred and fiftieth episode, and they just couldn't stick the landing. And and I'm it really upsets me to say, you know, the, the series spent so much time on this pointless arc in the middle, and then the the arc at the end was just fell so flat the you know the, the you know the characters that were developed um but you know they didn't use the plot and the characters in, in the right way and you know they struggled to find out what to do with characters you know in a way that they haven't since season four it's such a shell of what it used to be and it's so upsetting because eric wallace the showrunner did some amazing stuff in season six and that was his first season i really thought the flash was looking up but no it's just it's gone back downhill and it really kills me. I don't know what they're going to do with season eight, but I hope that they can bring it back because I used to love the show so much. You know, there's so many elements that they could do really well, but they just they just really, they messed it up, man. They really did. I know you haven't seen season five or six, but season seven is definitely my least favorite season of the show. And, oh, really? Wow. Yeah, wow. and could be my least favorite season of, of the Arrowverse, you know? It's, it's almost as bad as Arrow season four which is famously dreadful. So, yeah, it really upsets me, but it was, it was atrocious. Um, mm. I really hoped, I held on hope, and I really hoped it could, it could fix itself, but it didn't, and it makes me so sad. However, the beauty of the Arrowverse is that when one show is bad, there are other good shows, and at least we've had Batwoman Season 2, Legends Season 6, Superman Lois Season 1, which have all been great, so thank God for that. Flash, Flash ain't great, but you know what can you do? Uh, I think I'd give it five, four. I don't know because there are still like you know there are still elements that remain that I think are pretty good. Um, you know, just like production wise and character wise, the music's still good. But I think I'd give it like a three out of ten. It really wasn't good, and not a lot could save it. There were a couple of episodes that I liked, but other than that, yeah really shame and 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 yeah so had to leave it on a bit of a downer but yeah uh, uh, yeah <laughs> um yeah i know wow. uh, i've been crying about it for so long no tears will come anymore uh do you want to take us out then yeah what did i no wait no no <laughs> do you want to roll us out into the outro <laughs> yes uh okay sorry i thought you said something else do you have like i was gonna say i was like oh okay uh right uh thank you for listening uh today has been a strange episode uh because we've been talking about space jam 2 and you know it's it it was a film definitely a film uh yeah i can confirm it it's a film that, that exists we were talking about when we go to the cinema of each other we always watch like just weird films. We watched Sonic the Hedgehog, Fast and Furious 9, Space Jam 2, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Rise of Skywalker. Like, we haven't, like, watched any, like, proper masterpieces together. We should fix that. Yeah, we, sh- we need to watch something that's solid, you know. Yeah, do. That really, gram- yeah, that's groundbreaking for the experience, you know. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Hmm. But yes, thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, this next week, uh, as this comes out, we'll be doing Suicide Squad 2016 with our friend Joe from Hag Dog Films. And then we'll be doing Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad 2021. Uh, and, then, and then we'll be going into Star Wars, The Bad Batch Season 1. And the week after that is our two-year, uh, not two-year, one year special we're going to be revisiting tenet so very exciting stuff coming the our way so if you want to see any of that or if you want to head back and look at our other stuff you can subscribe you know we've got some cool stuff at, uh, that we have talked about uh you can get in con- contact with us at alsteinfilmpod at gmail.com we will read it out if you do uh, or follow us on twitter or instagram at alsteinfilmpod or follow me on uh, on twitter at tom the boardman and yeah anything else to say 
Um, uh, okay, yes. Sorry, I was. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember what. Yeah, I usually say. So, um, thank you for listening again. Uh, please wash your hands and uh, wear your mask when you go into the cinema. You know, yes. we we want we want to be safe. Don't go on your phones. Uh, yeah, uh, just do that, please. You know, we just want to keep those cinema. Uh, For the love of uh, God, think of the children. Oh yes, and again, wash your hands. Yes, it's important. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and um, so without further ado, take what you given. Give nothing back. Goodbye. 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 I was waiting. I was waiting. I was like, is he going to do it? Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, oh, you goodbye. 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 No, you. No, me? You. Um, no, I am me. You are you. Oh, my God. It makes sense now. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.